All right, here we go. Keep going, going on the the music studio. Rock on, huh? This time we're gonna do all the little furniture. Let's go. says keep it up so let's do it we're gonna start out real easy we're gonna make this little three-legged stool and it's kind of like tinker toys where you just put the little pegs in the hole I think we can do this Next up, we have this little um, side table. It's a roof light. We're not gonna put the light in until the very end when we actually build the building. So I'll do that all in one thing. But this one's pretty easy. We're gonna put make a vase out of this tubing. Cut it to the size it wants. Put some um, greenery inside. And then we're gonna build the box. Once the box is all nice and dry, um, if you do this too soon, the box will just collapse as you jam the little plant in there. You just glue the plant in there, and then we're going to put some decorative moss on top. tried sprinkling it kind of where the picture said, but there you go. Another easy one. Yep, we're talking we're uh, taking it nice and easy on this one compared to all the musical instruments that we did. This one is literally glue the legs onto the table and you're done. all nice and dry we're gonna decorate the tabletop I made a little uh, vase with a flower I'm going to do a whole video on flowers and plants so don't worry about that it's not something that we haven't done before but um, I'll do a whole video on it we'll put the flower vase on and then what we made before we made the little um, license plate and we're gonna put that on there as a cool decoration
if I was going to pick one possibly difficult or a little bit tougher than the, all the other parts in the furniture is the table and chairs. The lion says, be patient, I'm sure you can, and that's all it takes. Um, this will be the one project where I actually will use the templates for when I cut the material out. But as far as the cutting the padding out, I am going to just glue the um, pieces of wood directly onto it, let it dry, and then we'll cut those out. It's just easier that way. For me, anyway. Now I cut out the templates that it gave, and the reason I'm using these is, you notice there's stripes on there, and there's stripes on the um, material? Well, there's a reason for that. It's so that we can keep nice and consistent. So, the patterns can match the way that they go on the sofa. And also, with my cool little pen here, that has a little snail, <laughs> uh, I'm going to make sure that the pattern itself, so the blue, brown, whichever side I'm going to do for, say, the couch right here, I'm going to do all along that side so that they all match up. And then the chair is all going to match that one stripe. It's the only thing that you got to pay attention to so it doesn't look a little wonky. So here I have them all cut out and you will notice that the stripes all match up. So the little short ones are the chair, so they're all that kind of three blue stripes and the couch all has the stripes that match. And that's the only thing you have to pay attention. So, And then we're just going to cut out the padding there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue each of the padded pieces down onto our little material and I'm just going to do each piece first and then I'm going to fold them up. There's two pieces that are going to be the backs of the chair and the couch and they will have an extra piece of material which we're doing right here. I'm going to take each piece and fold all the side pieces on. Just um, glue all the way around the edge and then use your fingers to squish the sides down. Once those are all dry, I, I wait till it dries completely and then I just trim it up to make it all pretty. And um, they turn out nice and neat and tidy. All right, now we're going to glue it onto our little wood pieces. And I start out goofing up because for each chair and uh, couch, there's a back piece and a bottom piece. You notice here that I'm putting the back piece on the bottom because it has a backing on it. So <laughs> I goofed that up and realized it and then I fixed it. again just pay attention to your stripes they don't have to be exact but it definitely uh, throws you off if those stripes are not matching up at least a little bit <laughs>
Now once I finished it, I noticed that um, in the final stage, there's going to be a, a couple little props on it, so I decided to do those now. I like to uh, pre-do things as much as I can. So this one has the little radio on it. couch is going to have a book and the headset that we've made in the other videos. Now we're going to make a cabinet, pretty straightforward, and uh, it's just uh, making a box and we're going to basically laminate the top, countertop, with this um, paper that looks like wood. And you're just going to wrap the top like a present and then that's going to go on top as your wood countertop. With this one, you definitely want to pay attention to that little AB um, symbol, where which side of the pieces of wood your other pieces are going to go. So is it going to go on top? Is it going to go on the side? Otherwise, things won't fit well. And it just uh, takes a little patience, and sometimes you might have to glue a piece, let it dry, and then move on to the next one. Otherwise, it'll collapse on you. This little piece is probably the trickiest because it's supposed to go on the inside. That's where you look at the directions very carefully of if they go on top, side, things like that. But it's kind of anything that's hanging in midair that you have to glue is tricky. But I do like this white glue. If you put it thin enough, it dries pretty quick. Enough to tack it. As you can see, it just kind of stays there for you as long as you don't fiddle with it too much. I did end up flipping it upside down so that the pieces would stay together. It, probably the most frustrating of all these little pieces, but you can do it. And then you just glue the countertop on the top once this is all dry. a little door handle 
Um, just make it kind of a staple shape. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. They give measurements, but um, you can kind of eyeball it. It's tiny enough that nobody will notice um, any imperfections. And now we're going to put this cabinet to use and we're going to put all our accessories on here. We made um, the little keyboard and speakers and books all in our previous videos. If you haven't seen those already, you can go back and check those out. And a little uh, tape deck, I guess it's supposed to be. I don't know, it's awfully big. I think it's just decoration. <laughs> but once it's done, it's, uh, it's pretty cute. Here's another super easy one. It's nice to have uh, some super easy in-betweens. And basically you're just gonna stick that funky little, it looks like, I don't know if you remember the center of a record player when you had a 45. <laughs> so you stick that on the round piece and then you're going to put the legs on. Maybe the only trickiest one is make sure your legs are all facing the same direction. make a microphone and a sign that goes on outside of the building they group these together so might as well put these in here and I'm just cutting the wire that's this thick um, silver wire and it's going to be part of the microphone and then there's a bead on top for the microphone head I guess The sign is easy. You just uh, cut out the designated pieces of paper that says music studio and glue it onto the sign base. There's a front and the back. The back is just a, uh, no words. It's just black. And um, once it's all dry, I just trim it up to make it all nice and straight. And you're done with that one. Whenever you're sticking metal to plastic or metal to metal, you're gonna use this sticky glue. It's annoying, but it works much better than the white glue, which I would love to use for every single thing because it's really easy to work with. But we use the, the clear glue for that, and here's the white glue for any wood to wood or wood to paper, paper to paper, that kind of thing. You 
only tricky part of this one is um, keeping it straight. I use the grids on my cutting board to kind of get it relatively straight until I have to put the little microphone on the end, which is really precarious, but just be patient. You can do it. You notice I ended up using the, the white glue on this one because it dries just a little bit faster than the other stuff. There we go. We can start recording vocals. Woohoo! Success belongs to the persevering. That's right. Because this is our last project for this one. For all our furniture. And we're just going to make a nice, simple little crate box. One thing that uh, I've learned and I never remember is be patient and let the glue dry before you start fiddling with it. Because if you do, that happens. <laughs> but you just rebuild it. Uh, and uh, once that dries, we'll stick the, the bottom piece on, which is just the piece of cardboard. And we're just going to put a couple pieces of plant in there and our little um, rock on record. It threw in one more table in here, and this one's easy. You just bend the white wires into the table legs. At first, mine work came out completely uneven, so I just trimmed it so that at least the, the legs were even, so it didn't wobble too much. got yourself another little short little table. Not too shabby. All right, another section of the music studio done. We got all the furniture. We got a cabinet full of goodies. We got a couch and a chair and a bunch of little tables and stools, even a microphone. And uh, next up, we're gonna do all the little plants and then we'll probably do a whole section on lighting and then we're gonna build the building. So we're getting very, very close. Stick with it and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.